Hi everyone, I'm on my way to one of the local beaches. Go see if there's any fossils around. It's a Miocene area, so it should be about, what's that, 8 to 20 million years old? I think this is mid Miocene, so probably 12 million years old. Gonna see if we find a penguin today <laughs> or some kind of bird. Areas like this always get me excited. There's a whole bunch of rocks that have been washed out. I haven't seen anything yet. This is where I would expect to find like shark teeth and all sorts that have just washed out in between the rocks. See, this is where the waves have been hitting um, this bit of the cliff and it's actually collapsed a little bit. So there should be some new things in here. Might have to get my feet wet. <laughs> you know the good stuff's gonna be in the water. This is why I have to buy new shoes like every six months. <laughs> they just don't last in the water. Just as I turned the camera off, <laughs> I saw uh, a jawbone over there. It looks modern. I guess it's from a cow or something. Quite deep. Let's see if we can get it out. If we're getting too wet. Oh yeah, that's a uh, that's from a cow or something. That's not from a, a whale or sperm whale. <laughs> There's a nice concretion over there. This one too. feet were burning but that's just kind of got numb now. I often get asked how do I find um, these crab fossils. The first thing I look for is one like this. I already picked it up but I found it just on the side of this rock and that's the shape that got my attention. You see it's really round and it's quite fat. It's got a bit of height to it. So you always have to inspect it, see if you find any legs. And you can barely see those two legs over there. Really tiny. And I think there's just two legs sticking out. And there where my thumb is over there, there's two little dots there. And those will be the tips of two legs, which means the other six legs and the claws will be inside. Yeah, that's a good find. I'm happy with that. It's not what I'm looking for today, but I suspect there's a nice crab inside here. Yeah? I really want a bird or a penguin or even some ear bones. I'll just carry on looking. Well, I haven't found anything else other than that maybe crab. But here again are two good shapes that I'll investigate. One on that side and a nice one on this side. And I think I saw one just over there. Let's have a look. Start with a big one. Maybe it's a nice big crab. Nothing at first glance. 
Hmm. Something over there, but I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a crab. So look at the tinier one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Immediately you can see there are four tiny legs on that side. Yep, three legs on that side. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice tiny little crab. One, two, three, four. You can see the leg rings just over there where my thumb is. That's your clue that it's a crab. That's a small crab for over here. It's a really, really hard rock there. This thing will be difficult to prep. Oh well, that's... Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's a definite crab and one maybe crab for today. No, I just need a definite penguin. I still got to look at that one. Pop this one down over here. Mm, nothing definite in there that I can see. That's not bad. One out of three. Put that rock back in there. There's a few things living on it. It's always worth having a look at these little tidal pools. Let me get this one GPS tagged and packed away. <laughs> I've been looking at this for a few minutes now, trying to figure out what it is. I wonder if this is my first crinoid. Is it a crinoid or a crinoid? Anyway. You can see there, it's almost got that star shape in the middle there. It's got things coming off here, all over it. Hmm. It's very heavy, but I'm going to put it to one side. And I'll get it on the way back. So I don't know if I've got one of these. Whatever it is, it's, it's a fossil. Probably a shell. Yeah, that's very cool. Something different. I always get excited for a bit of bone. Even if it is a random one like this. I'm gonna guess it's cow. It's not fossilized, it reminds me of the of a deer. Uh, that leg bone of a deer. I forget what it's called. I assume it would be pretty similar on a cow. Even maybe a horse. I did find one fossil. Where is it now? It's a beautiful internal mold of a scallop shell, a pectin. Not much of the shell left. It's just the internal mold. I love finding them though. <laughs> Such cool little fossils. Okay, well, this bone's staying here. So a nice looking concretion back here. Nothing on that one. It's the wrong shape as well. This is a piece of travertine. It's a calcium... Is it calcium carbonate? And you'll see that it's got the moulds of um, plant material in it. I think it's because it precipitated out of a marsh. And those are the moulds of the plant, the roots and the the plant material around which it formed. It's pretty cool. I think they use it in tiling. A third of travertine tiles. It's always exciting when I find a cliff that hasn't got an overhang because then it's safe to go have a look at it. Have a look there, there's some nice gastropods, some shells in there. 
Beautiful little ones. And there's a flabellum, a solitary coral. There's some more flabellum over there. There'll probably be a tusk shell or two if we keep looking. I'm still hoping to find a meg tooth. <laughs> Just sticking out of the cliff <laughs> one day. There's a fragment of a tusk shell. No shark teeth. Oh, wait, did I speak too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Did I actually find a shark tooth? That over there could be a tooth. It's shiny enough. <laughs> That's so exciting. Okay, let's try and extract it. And I've learned from past mistakes and I've got a little bit of B72 consolidant with me. I'll put that on top. And that should um, strengthen it a little bit. Yeah, that's one of my better extractions. Got a nice layer of the cliff in there. I wonder if it's a, a tooth. Could even be like a, a tiny dolphin tooth or a, a ray tooth. I'm not sure. This could be a nice one to prep at home. Let me get it packed up. Uh, when I was extracting it, when you chisel, you always chisel away from the fossil <laughs> and you go around it and then see if it will lift up nicely. This one did lift up really nicely. I think those are a few forearms. I think they call that a lens. <laughs> I almost thought I saw another tooth over there. So that's a, a tiny lens, which is just a collection, I and mean, it's a circular collection of those forearms, and maybe other tiny fossils in there. <laughs> Have a look at that rock down there. <laughs> it's glowing. I think that's a jasper. Let's take it home and cut it. <laughs> it's got some really beautiful colors. It's almost see-through. I think that'll be a nice cut. Here's the first bit of bone I've seen today. Quite a nice chunk as well. You can see quite a bit of detail. If you look at this side, if you look at this side, it almost looks like um, not the rostrum, it's the jaw. Anyway, the jaw because it's got that hollow bit in there, and it's going all the way through. To that side, it's too heavy to carry back. It's a nice piece though. It's very hard rock. Good luck trying to prep that. I'm starting to head back to the car. In winter it gets dark so early. Back at the, the maybe crinoid. It's definitely star looking. 
<laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> Let's get it loaded up. That's me for today. Turned into a pretty good hunt. I'm really keen to see if that's a shark tooth or a tooth. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Let me get home, get a coffee. And here are today's finds. You can see this is quite a large concretion. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Let's take a closer look at them. This is that cool scallop shell, uh, pectin, that I found quite late in the hunt. It's got a tiny bit of the original shell left, but it's mainly a mold. And I really love finding these interior molds of the, the pectins. They are beautiful. You can use these shells to date uh, the area by looking at the strontium levels left in the shell and then comparing that against known levels of strontium in the ocean. And I'm pretty sure this is my first crinoid. You can see there's little bits of the crinoid throughout this concretion. As far as I know there haven't been many crinoids found um, of this age in New Zealand. I've got no idea how you would prep it out it wouldn't separate from the rock, from what I can see. It couldn't use acid, I think. <laughs> I'm really glad I carried it out, even though it's so heavy. Just because I don't have a crinoid at all. People are always finding crinoid <laughs> stems all over the place. I never seem to find them. Here's a tiny crab I found. You can see there's one, two, three legs visible on that side and four on this side. These are much clearer. See the other four leg rings over there. I'm not sure of the crab species. It's quite small. You can see I've already uh, labeled it. If I keep a record of all the finds and where I find them with the GPS coordinates. This is the first one I found. And um, I'm going to say I'm 80% sure it's a crab in here. There's no real definite legs sticking out. Where are the ones I did see? And there where my thumb is over there. Let me zoom in a little bit. I think that's a leg sticking out there. And just a tiny, tiny little bit over there. Like I say, I'm about 80% sure that's a crab leg sticking out. If it is a crab in here, it's going to be really great because there's almost nothing sticking out. So there's going to be some complete legs in there uh, with the tips of the legs, which I don't normally find. And some great claws, hopefully. I've already got that shark tooth ready in the other room to prep. So let's go prep it and then I'm going to cut that rock I found today, that yellow jasper looking one. I'm really hoping this is a tooth. I'm going to try and uh, expose a bit more of it. And because it's so soft, this is just siltstone. I can get away with just a toothpick and some water. Let's go do that.
inside of it. It's not <laughs> not very impressive. It looks like a bit of calcite. I don't think it's calcedony or jasper. It looks very much like calcite. <laughs> uh, that yellow color was probably just some weathering on the outside or oxidation, maybe. Um, you sometimes get a bit of iron staining. Not a bad little stone. At least we know what was inside now. It's got a bit, little bit of character to it. I don't think I'll be polishing it though. Seeing as that rock wasn't very exciting, let's try and cut this one. This is one I picked up on the beach probably a year ago. It's a, it's an agate that's broken off over on that side. It should be pretty cool inside though. Let's have a look. That's quite a cool agate. <laughs> oh, I don't see any banding, so maybe it's just some chalcedony. That's really cool. Not an awful lot going on in there. I think it's worth giving it another cut. Maybe through there there's a few little bits of growth over there. Some is that moss growing in there. Yeah, that's cool. That's starting to get more interesting, and there's a bit of banding. Then, if you can see through there, a little bit of red moss as well. I was hoping this one would go deeper, but. Yeah, it's not going very deep. That's quite a cool one. Thanks so much for joining me everyone. I really hope you enjoyed that hunt. It's quite a long video. <laughs> so thanks for staying till the end. So happy with this little shark teeth. I don't often find shark teeth like you know. <laughs> so it's always a buzz finding one. Stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next hunt.